y'all ready for this? Another great doubleheader here for the Championship Gaming Series, and we're going to give you a little recap. I'm DJ Wheat from the CGS and CGS Online. Joining me, of course, you know this guy, it's Red Eye. Red, we saw two amazing matchups. Let's did. talk about the first one, 3D New York versus San Francisco Optics. It started out in Dead or Live Female yep. with Cools Villa and Vanessa. She lost last night to Phoenix from the Dallas Venom, but she came back on the rebound. Yeah, she did. I think she deserved it overall. I mean, there was a oh, couple yeah. of rounds where it, you know, I thought maybe Cools Villa could have taken them, but Vanessa was pretty solid. And not only that, Swoozy caught up with her. What's up, guys? We are back. I am joined with the lovely Vanessa. Now, Vanessa, 5-3. Mm -hmm. That's the most Coolsville has ever gotten on you. You're looking a little stressed out there. What's going on? Um, I don't know what's going on with my play. I think I'm just got to work on my nerves, work on the stage presence, and so something I have to work with, really. It's not lack of practice. I mean, against casuals, I'm doing really well, so I think it's just something that I have to work on in terms of stage, because it's the only thing I'm thinking of right now. Does it feel any different this season versus last season? That's the thing, not especially. They're all, they all improved, I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to come off as arrogant or anything, but I personally feel I can do better than this. I've been doing it more comfortably in EA, and I'm not too pleased with the way I've been performing in these past two days. All right, there you have it, VOA Vanessa. Uh, next up we have FIFA and uh, Sturmey against Wizzicall is always going to be a classic matchup because you know, these two have been top two of the league, apart from Ifra that is, uh, of all time in terms of stats and so on. So they've, they've won plenty of games, they've played each other a lot, but Sturmey had never beaten Wizzicall before tonight and it continued that way as well. And in the end it came down to penalties and Wizzicore even managed to save two of them as well. It was incredible. I thought it was awesome just because it gave 3D an additional point yeah. to add to the scoreboard. You're going to find out how that affected it near the end, but it was a nice uh, matchup there, and I was really excited to see us. Of course, that takes us on to the next game, Counter-Strike Source, where yeah. 3D once again continued their dominance 11 to 7 over the optics. Getting that extra round was and, big. And you know, the weird thing is 5-4 at the half. I actually thought maybe the optics have sussed this one. One out, you know, we we joke that it's called D underscore 3D, yeah. but actually it looked more like an optics map at the halftime. So I was surprised that they managed to pull it back and do such a great job on the T side. Then we had Dead or Alive Mail, where Chappelle took on Ninja CW, another epic matchup. And unfortunately, it didn't quite go in Chappelle's favor, going up against his former team, the San Francisco Optics newcomer Ninja CW devastated his opponent, yep. five to one. Yep. And, uh, and it was pretty much deserved. That left us at a very, very close franchise match, and it would all go down to Forza. So basically, whoever would win the Forza Motorsport 2 game, and we had a few of these last year, they're always oh, yeah. heart racing. I mean, we're, our hearts are pumping up here when these games go ahead. So it went down to the last one. It not only went down to the last lap, but it went down to the last corner, no less. And incredibly, come back down, managed to avoid mix em ups takeout by using the pit lane. And not only that, brilliant ending to it, and we managed to get the scoop. Here's come back down with Swoozy. Explain that last lap, because that's what everybody was on the edge of their chair with. What was going through your mind, my friend? Um, especially after the first corner where everybody wrecked, I just wanted to get the best exit out of the corner, and luckily I was right behind mix em up, which is where I wanted to be. Um, and I knew if I bumped him on the second to last turn, Darkstorm was right there to take the spot if he was able to hit me on the last corner. It was really nerve-wracking for me, and I know like, it could have gone either way. Good stuff. Well, it all came down to Forza. These guys pulled it through for New York. Back to you guys up at the top. After the matchup, 3D the victor, 26 to 20. We also caught up with general manager Dave Gaffon. All right, thanks guys. I am here with Dave Gaffon, GM for the 3D New York. Now, Dave, it's that that last one was like a roller coaster. Explain to me that ride that we just witnessed. You know what? Uh, we went into that last race and we, we knew that there was only one thing, and that it was first place. And uh, I had two of the hardest working racers in the CGS. They've played and played and played that track. They know all the tricks and all the things you can do to prevent being taken out, and that's what you saw in the last turn. You know, it was a line no one has ever seen before on the track, and sure enough, San Francisco's guy went flying past into the dirt, and we brought it home. So, uh, describe to me what you were feeling when you're watching that setup about to happen. The last turn is getting ready to go down. What's going through your head, bro? It's like 
I can't ex describe it. It's like when you know the, the home run's about to be hit and it's just like perfect contact and it was all setting up perfectly and then it, it just happened and I was just ecstatic. What is it going to take to stop you guys? You're like with 7-1 now? Is there anybody out there that can stop you? I, I think so. I mean, there's all these teams, like like you saw, this came down on the last turn. Could go either way and, you know, I think maybe we just have the right mix of people to know how to get it done when the when it's on the line. Well, these guys do not seem phased by the lights and the camera in the crowd. Back to you guys up top. Next up we had LA versus Chicago. LA still searching for their first win. Chicago needing a win to stay in touch with the playoffs. And uh, it was actually LA that kicked things off with a fantastic win for Cregan with two fantastic goals as well. They were really well taken. I saw you actually sitting in the corner. Every time he scored, you were just like, wow, how did he score that? Uh, it was a great matchup, Red. Really was. seeing Cregan come out, whatever GM did to, to, to make his play better, <laughs> it worked. Cregan did a phenomenal it, job. It, it certainly did. And then we moved on to DOA female, and that didn't go quite as well as LA would have hoped. No, it didn't. Uh, of course, Kasumi-chan taking on Bell, and I have to say, we may not have seen the Kasumi-chan in the earlier games of the season, but she is back. She played brutally tonight against Bell and came up with a 5-1 victory. Fantastic. For, yep. And for while Chicago. that was going on as well, I was watching the first half of the Counter-Strike. Now, Inferno is a very CT bias. Matt, well, can be. And, well, even then, the complexity really seemed like they were back on it. 8-1 at the half, and you thought, hang on a minute, it doesn't matter what Bell's done here. Counter-Strike's going to pull them through, and they kind of did in the end with an 11-7 victory, but I don't think it was quite as good as they were hoping after that. No, you know, time. Rambo had some great clutch rounds. Awesome Haynes came in big, the replacement for Zet on the complexity Counter-Strike source team, but, you know, in the end, it, they got the points they needed. They did very well, but I think it was expected against the Chimera, and, yes. of course, that led us into Forza, where Chimera, the last year's MVPs of Chomper and Jason X, they came back. They, they were did. definitely in full form. They had a 5-2 win over Complexity, and even though there were some early collisions, not a whole lot for the remainder no, of the race. It was a pretty standard race, I have to say. Once Chomper was out front, that was pretty much it, and all of the other players were equally as far apart, and there was never going to be any collision. So, yeah, Chomper wins his second race, only his second race of the season, incredibly, eight in. But it was enough to give them a 5-2 lead and give them a chance for Black Mamba. And Black Mamba was, of course, a competitor in the final game, Dead or Alive Mail, against Perfect Legend. Now, Perfect Legend, the guy that everyone said he is going to come and dominate Dead or Alive Mail. Well, he's done exactly the opposite. And Black Mamba looked in top form like last year's world MVP should be. And I think he is back to play. In fact, we caught up with Black Mamba after his win. I am here with the guy who just clutched the win for Chicago, Black Mamba. Now, explain something to me, bro. When you were walking up on that stage, I'm seeing you getting fidgety, you're getting all this. What was going through your head knowing that everything was riding on you? Well, Brian just basically told me strip that we needed a win out of me and I needed to have it more. And I, I, I really wanted that win too because I really needed a win. I've had a bad season so far, so I just felt great. So it's off your chest, because normally in these tournaments, you always seem to edge PL out just by a little bit. So did you have a feeling going into this one, it's going to be the same kind of routine? Well, me and, me and Perfect Legend, we always go back and forth in tournaments. So I said, like, yeah, it could go either way, you know. But, like, this time it went my way, and PL, he played, it was a good game. Good stuff. Now, that last round, bro, you know I'm going to come back to that. Uh, <laughs> what was going through your head? I saw a lot of whips. I saw a lot of jabs. What was going on in those last 10 seconds of that match? Well, when it came down to the last little bit, like, see how he's a Gen food player? I was kind of anticipating the mid-punch. <laughs> yes, yes, the mid-punch, the mid-punch. So I was anticipating it. So I was like, you know what? Gamble a little bit. Go for it. So are we going to see that MVP Black Mamba that we saw last year now? Yeah, I, I'm just trying to get back in order. I'm trying to get my chips back in order. So. All right, here we go. Good stuff. Black Mamba came through, held it down. That's pretty much all for now. Back to you guys up top. And that made the final score 22 to 17 in favor of Chicago. Both teams looking for a win to stay alive in the playoff race, but Los Angeles complexity comes up short and now their overall record is 0 and 8. Chicago moves up and they might be able to land a spot in the playoffs.